So when my husband Ryan and I built and designed our home, we decided the whole house, the whole gathering space would be around a really big kitchen island. That that would be the center and focus of our home. Uh, we did this because we kind of had this core belief that no matter how nice your living room is or your dining room is, when people gather at your house, they gather in the kitchen, they gather where the food is. And so we put this great big, huge center island in. Uh, the living room is off to one side and and the, uh, the dining room is off to the other side. But so much happens right there at the core and center of our house. Um, it's either I'm making supper and the kids are doing homework. I get to check in with them about the day. We have some friends over, they sit there while we're finishing up whatever details we're gonna do um, for the meal we're about to share. So much happens right there at the center of our home, right there on the kitchen island. Um, today, in the book of Exodus, we're going to look at what is the center of the heart of the Israelites. So it's at this point in the Exodus account that the people are working on building all the details of the tabernacle. Now the tabernacle, it's this moving tent. It's this place where God is going to preside and people are going to worship God. And so it's got all kinds of intricate details that God gives to Moses and then Moses gives to the people to build and construct this tabernacle. Now it's a tent and they can take it down because they're moving through the wilderness. And so uh, it's made to be portable. Uh, but there are four items here in this part in Exodus 37 and 38 um, that are really important to this tabernacle. It's kind of the, the things that go on the inside. And it's honestly things that we kind of use in our modern day sanctuaries sort of as well. We kind of mimic those things. Um, the first uh, of those items is the Ark of the Covenant. Now this Ark, uh, it was adorned with gold. It was very specifically laid out on how it was supposed to look. It had these two cherubim, these two kind of angel-like figures that had their wings kind of touched. If you have ever seen Indiana Jones, uh, they have the Ark of the Covenant in one of those movies and it kind of looked something like that. But now the lid of the Ark of the Covenant, it's actually what they call the mercy seat. And I love that so much, but it's the mercy seat in which God will dwell when God is dwelling with God's people. Um, I love the fact that the, the mercy seat is where God dwells. Like it's not, it's not the judgment seat. It's not the uh, all knowing seat. It's not the all powerful or the glory seat. Instead, it's the mercy seat. The mercy, the place where you're going to receive grace, that, that's where God is sitting. That is God's, uh, that's God's spot right there in mercy and in grace. And this is the place uh, that they're building in order to know that that is the place that God will be found. God's also very specific about where the ark is supposed to be placed within the tabernacle. And it's also specific about where this tabernacle is supposed to be in all of the city. Just like my kitchen is, a, we think, the most important room in our house. Uh, they put the Ark of the Covenant where God is sitting, right in the middle of the community of Israelites. The Ark is in the middle, the tabernacles around it, and then the Israelite, the two million Israelites or so, they're all around. So that God is in the center of all of those things. And what they do is they kind of separate God with kind of a thick curtain. And this curtain establishes that this Ark of the Covenant has its own sacred space. But it's right there, right there in the center of all life for the Israelites, remembering for them as a physical reminder that God is the core of the community of their existence. And, you know, if we read this and we think that it applies to us, well, that's a message for us as well. What is the core and existence of our lives? The next item that God wanted them to make is actually called uh, the golden table. And now this was placed on the other side of the curtain away from the ark. The golden table sat there. And on this golden table, there are supposed to be 12 loaves of bread on this table. It's fascinating if you think about it really the 12 represents the 12 tribes of israel but also if you fast forward a little bit the 12 disciples that followed jesus it talks about uh, the bread is symbolic because it reminds god's people about how god provided for them uh, the bread when they were in the wilderness how god would never let them starve to death that they always had a provision available from god and if you're someone who calls himself a Christian, uh, we can also see this fast forward to the book of John where Jesus actually says, I am the bread of life. 
So now we go from this actual physical sustaining forever bread to this actual physical ever sustaining Jesus. It's, it's really remarkable. So it's not all in just we need the material sense, but it's all we need in a spiritual sense too. Now the lampstand. You sit there and wonder, well, why, why did this tent need a lamp? But it was made with a thick cloth. And so the lampstand would have been the only way that you had light uh, in this area, this middle part of the tabernacle. And the, the lampstand, it has these seven branches, each ending with a cup of oil so that it would illuminate the flame. If we use our imagination for a moment, we can imagine how walking into this inner part of the temple where the Ark of the Covenant is just on the other side of the curtain, and then you have the golden table that's there with the 12 loaves of bread, and it's the lampstand that is lighting up that whole room. Uh, I imagine it was really dark in there, and so they needed that lampstand to be able to see and make their way around. Uh, but imagine that gold of the, the table and gold of the lampstand kind of glistening that whole uh, inner part of the tabernacle. And then the last object, it's this incense altar, which basically is like this golden box that was sort of filled with coals and a special incense would be put on there to kind of create a fragrance, a, a fragrance that you would ha imagine kind of gets lifted up to God. And you want to think about this for just a second. So we have this incense table, this incense altar, the golden table, the lampstand, the Ark of the Covenant, what this experience would be like going in. It's really amazing to me how God, in all of God's detail, really tries to take on all of our senses. What we see with the lampstand, what we feel with the ornateness of everything, uh, what we smell with the incense, what we taste uh, when we taste the bread, and, and then what we hear from the voice of God. All of our senses are incorporated into this, uh, into this tabernacle. Um, so there's four items. So the ark. Uh, at the center of the ark, the center of the community, the mercy and presence and grace of God. And then the table reminding us that God is always providing. God's always offering God's provision. And then the lampstand that would guide what you see. And then the incense table what would guide what you would smell. Now just take a second and, and when you're reading this, walk through this with your imagination. And here are my questions for you. So what's physically at the center of your home? What, what is it? And, and maybe why is it that way? What's the center of your home life? Uh, and then here's another question. What is the center of you, of your life? Well, what gets your attention and your purpose? What, what kind of grounds, grounds you? How do you live from there? Friends, I'm so glad to be with you. We'll see you tomorrow.